Hi, it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to be making a wrapper for a plant by laminating. I hope you'll stay tuned. So what I decided I was going to do is I got this really pretty plant. Hopefully you can see it. That's what it looks like. It's going to be it's going to be a blue hyacinth and the outside of the container it's this plastic that I don't like. So what I thought I would do is I would take this really pretty napkin and run it through my laminator with a matte laminating pouch. So the laminating pouches I got from Amazon and this is what they, I think, this is what they're called. They're from True Lam. They're premium laminating pouches that are matte. You have to make sure they're matte and these are letter size 9 by 11 and a half. So that's the most important part of this. I ordered what I thought were matte laminating pouches before and ended up getting regular ones. So I've got a crap load of regular laminating folders, pouches, folders. I'll just call, I'll just make things up. So what I'm going to do, I was going to take my napkin and remove the back layer on it, but I decided not to do that. But instead, what I am going to do is I'm going to line it up. I'm going to line up my napkin with uh, paper so I kind of have an idea of how big it, uh, how big the uh, laminated portion of it will be and then I'm just going to cut the rest of that off and I have these new scissors I have to say I'm really liking they're made by Tonic and they have the little things at the bottom you can stick your finger in and that really helps me my fingers don't seem to play well with uh, regular scissors so here's how I'm going to do this I'm going to take my napkin, I'm going to put it in the laminating pouch face down. It's kind of hard to do this when you don't have a lot of space and your laminating machine takes up a lot of it. I'm going to put this inside the pouch right up to the center seam, hopefully. And then I'm going to lay, I want to use only one side of the laminating pouch for each napkin. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting two pieces of scrap paper in between the um, napkins. I did that so you can see that I'm doing two. I'm going to line those up. I'm going to have to probably cut off more napkin. And then this napkin I want to be face up. Um, that's so when it goes through the laminating machine one side of the pouch will be used for one napkin and the other side of the laminating pouch will be used for the other napkin. I've got my laminating pouch ready. I've got one napkin face down, one napkin face up and two pieces of paper between them and then I'm just going to run it through my laminating machine. And if you don't think that it does a good job of laminating it one time you can put it through a second time because sometimes it just it's too um too much for it to just really adhere to the first time it's pretty cool looking though isn't it i like the matte look of these because they're a lot they're not shiny and plasticky looking they are more expensive i wasn't happy with how much i had to pay for my uh, you know my new project but it was, um, it did make me happy. I'm putting it through the machine one more time only. This time I took out all of the extra plies of napkin and I didn't know there were two ply extra on each, um, on each side, which really gives you a lot of bulk that you don't want. And you really want to adhere this napkin to the outside of the laminating folder. I don't know why I keep calling that a folder. It's a pouch. It's not a folder. It's a pouch. It does look like an embossing folder though because of the way it opens up. Ugh, it's a pouch. Let me see if this time if it really adhered well to the pouch. That's the key is making sure that our napkin has become one. Okay, see on this side, here's my goal. My goal is to make sure, oh look at this almost coming off. It's to make sure that this side of the napkin is really stuck to the laminating pouch. So sometimes the pouch will adhere to the sides 
And if it does, like it did this time, what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to cut it out. You cut the sides, basically. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift up my side like that and just kind of run my scissors kind of like a blade along the side if I can do that. I'll have to take it off screen to do the rest of it. I'm going to get a demon stick and use it instead. Just occurred to me that was a better plan, huh? You're probably all going, get your craft knife, Sandy. Of course, this one has all kinds of gunk on it, so it's not going to cut easily. Okay. That almost went the whole way up, which is great. There we go. Then I am going to use my scissors to cut across the top. And the nice thing about laminating napkins is the laminating machine gets the creases out of it. You know how you worry about all those weird creases from your napkin. I'm going to trim this one side. There's napkin sticking out of it. So I want to get rid of that. Okay. So all of this is scrap. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your napkin off. Mine are still adhered together at the top. You're going to take everything out of the middle, which is basically your scrap paper that you put in there, the two pieces of scrap. And then I want to cut off the top section so that I only have napkin up here too. This is what my two pieces are going to look like. It's beautiful, isn't it? And it's not going to pull apart at all. It's really well adhered to itself, which is what I wanted. All right, so here's my plant. And what I want to do is I want to measure from the very top, or the, excuse me, from the bottom to the top. And excluding this little lip that you probably can't see when it's upside down. It's about four inches tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut off four inches off the top of one of these. I've got to go this direction because I want to make sure the direction is facing up. So if you can't see this, you will in a second. Okay, let's see if I can get this to work. So I don't want to get dirt everywhere, but there's my pot, and there's what my plan is, is to wrap it around with something like this. I'm going to put the tear tape on the back of the napkin, and then what we'll do is we'll, we're going to get a line of tear tape around the top and the bottom and the sides of our napkin, and then we're going to be able to have this look a lot better than it did in that weird plastic paper. I just got this. It's called an EK Tools Circle Cutter. And you pick the size of your circle. It goes up to, I think, 11 inches, 12 inches. 5 inch circles all the way up to 12 inch circles. And you need to have um, a safe cutting surface under this. So that means you need to have a um, cutting mat. Here's the cutting mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this under here and I'm going to see what the how big this could possibly be because if I could figure out the largest it will be, then I'll know how much of this I want to cut out. So, let's see. And my inches over here, it looks like, I think if I made a seven inch circle, that would work. I, you probably can't see that. I'll move it back here. Maybe you can see it better back there. If I put it back in this corner, can you see that it's about six and a quarter inches right there, but if I made it seven, it would really wrap up around it. And then I can always cut it down. I don't wanna I don't wanna screw that up. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be too small. So what you could do when you're playing with this, it has centimeters on one side, and on this side it's in inches. So what you want to do to make a seven inch circle, you put this piece so it's the center of where you want it to be. And I'll just show you, you would spin it around, you spin this part around so that it cuts it. You want to make sure that you have enough room on the top, on both sides, you know, like you're going to swing this around 
like that to make sure that that knob is always hitting paper. Hopefully it's cutting. Okay, I think I got my whole, my circle almost cut out. Now that's about as close as we're going to get to being accurate. I'll have to practice using that cutter, that's for sure. What I want to do is I want to put this on the bottom and then I'm going to wrap it up the side somehow. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that. I'll probably use tear tape around the top of it. I'm just going to take the backing off of it and hope that this works. It might not. Let's be honest. We see me do things that haven't worked before. This might not be a this might not work at all, but it might work. So what I want to do is I want to set this in the middle of my mess. No, of my pot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some snips. I'm sure you've seen this done before. Let me cut it so I can see what I'm looking at. It's better when it's right up to the, when it's laying on the, on your, the work surface because then I can cut it and move it at the same whenever I need to. Whereas if you hold it, if you hold the paper up or if you lay it up on the side of the pot, you're never going to have a good, um, good cuts because you can't reach all the way to the bottom of it. So your goal here is to is to make a slit that's long enough so that you can pull this up to the side. I don't know if you can see this as I do it. Some of them have to be, you have to get them longer because you need to make sure that you can get them all the way to the bottom of the pot. Hopefully you can see me doing this. Some of mine aren't all the way to the bottom. So you wanna keep pulling them so they're right up there to the pot. See this piece is, hopefully, see this piece, it's about an inch and a half, maybe two inches long. You need to cut that one in half and go all the way. See, I cut it, I go it all the way to the bottom of the pot. That way, when you pull it up, it's not gonna have any gap at the bottom. And if you have more that are that wide, cut them because that's not, it's too long and you won't have a good, um, it won't look right. And there you've made a little wrapper and this is, uh, you know, it's waterproof because the laminated. Now it's not l laminated or it's not waterproof on the other side, like on the inside. It will ruin your napkin, but that's like the least of our worries at this point. Now don't forget we made these wrappers to go around the pot and we're going to just take, I put, I put tear tape here, 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 and on both ends. So the bottom, the top, the middle, and both ends. I'll show you as far as I can cut it, go. Okay, so I went, I would say that's about a third of the way around, and then I'm going to need to cut that off because we're starting to get too much of a curl and the paper is um, facing a different direction. So you wanna, we're gonna cut that piece off. And I'll just show you as we go. You're gonna lay that, whoops, I'm out of your, I'm out of the viewer. And then the next piece, you're just gonna line it back up and put that piece on. So that, those two pieces are ready. And then we're gonna take our backing off of this section that and I'll probably end up cutting this one in sections if it's um, it might be not it might mean it might not need to be cut because I might not be going around that much of the pot with it because I covered probably more than half the pot but our goal here is to make sure it looks good I 
I'm going to turn it so you can see it because I know it doesn't look like much yet to you. But if you look at it from this angle, isn't it pretty? Look at the bottom. The bottom is perfectly adhered just like the sides. Now I'm going to take a ribbon. If I have a ribbon that's that bluish purple color, it'd be great because then it'll match the hyacinths too. I think I'm going to straighten my ribbon. I'm sure you've seen me do this, but if you haven't, you need a hair straightener. I bought mine at a garage sale for a dollar at a thrift store or a garage sale because you don't want to pay a lot of money for this. I don't know. Some of your ribbon might be um, have like a plastic coating on it that when you heat it with this, you might end up having an issue. So I don't recommend that. But while it's heating up, I'm going to put tear tape around my around the top edge of this pot. Okay, so we're going to get that out of the way for now. And I'll just show you a, a second of this because I'm sure you're not going to want to watch a lot of this. And I don't know how long it takes to heat up, but we're going to pull our ribbon through it and just keep playing with it and see how long it takes us to get a straight ribbon. And then I want enough ribbon left over that we can put a bow on it. So this is our length of ribbon. If I need more, I will get it, but it's probably around, I don't know, three feet, maybe longer. Then I'm going to take my tear tape backing off. We'll hold our breath on this. Hopefully it'll stay in place. The tear tape is only there to keep the ribbon attached. The ribbon should, if we, if we uh, glue it on there hard enough, or no, if we tie it on here hard enough, it should be fine. Okay, I'm going to put it so the ribbon is like that. And I'm going to just kind of put the ribbon about halfway around that, have the ribbon halfway over the tear tape. See this side. You probably couldn't even see the ribbon while I was doing that. But this is what it's gonna look like if I can get if I can get it to be a little bit friskier on this side. So that is what it's gonna look like. I hope you saw that. Let me move this hyacinth word taggy out of the way there. What do you think? Think it looks like a keeper? I hope you enjoyed this and that maybe it gave you some ideas of something you can do with some napkins and with a potted plant that maybe you don't love the pot on. I hope that you give this a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.